So here we're given a curve with equation y equals 6x minus twice the square root of x cubed. And we're asked to find the x-coordinate of the stationary point on that curve. So first of all, we'll need to differentiate this expression because stationary points on curves have gradient 0. So we have to find the formula for the gradient. Now we can't differentiate this as it is with a square root of x cubed. We have to change that square root of x cubed into a power of x. Roots are at the bottom, powers at the top. You can always think of the Irish power x to the power 3. Power comes in at the top from the sun. That's how the tree gets its power and roots are at the bottom. Power in this case is 3, it's at the top, and the root is the second root, the square root. So it's x to the power 3 over 2. So let's rewrite that, 6x minus 2x to the 3 over 2. And let's differentiate that, dy by dx. Differentiating 6x will give you 6. Differentiating this, we bring the power down to the front and multiply. 3 over 2 times 2, the 2's cancel, we get 3x. And then we take 1 away from 3 over 2. So 3 halves minus 2 halves would give us 1 half. And what does that mean? Power at the top, power 1, makes no difference. Square root, 2 at the bottom. So it's just the square root of x. So there's the formula that tells us the gradient on this curve. For stationary points, for stationary points, we're going to set the gradient equal to 0. So we'll get stationary points by solving this equation. There's the gradient equals 0. Now let's add 3 times root x to both sides. And let's divide both sides by 3. So root x equals 2. Let's square both sides. x equals 4. So find the x-coordinate of the stationary point in the curve, and there is only one stationary point. There's only one place where that curve bends. It's either a maximum or it's a minimum. We haven't been told which, but x equals 4. Let's have a look at part b. Hence determine the greatest and least values of y in the interval from 1 to 9. So a curve with a maximum or a minimum, and remember we've only found one so the curve doesn't turn again. If it's going down, it continues down. If it's going up, it continues up. There's no more turning, no more stationary points in this graph. Um, Travelling, say, from 1 to 9, with a 4 in the middle, this is the x values, and the heights of these points give the y value. And if this was the graph, then that would be the greatest value. This would be the least value. Uh, suppose this, again, is 4, and if this was 1 and this was 9, this would be the least value. That would be the greatest value. So we'll find the least and greatest values at the end points of this interval from 1 to up to 9. Somewhere at the end will be either the greatest or the least. You can imagine a curve that, that looks like that with the 4 there and there's the 1 and there's the 9 for x. This time 1, the value x equals 1, would give a y value that's a lot greater than x equals 9 would give. And 4 would have its x equals 4 would have the least value for y. So it depends very much what the graph looks like, but certainly 
The only values we're concerned about are at the two end points and also at the stationary point that we've worked out. So we need to find out the value of y, uh, y first of all, when x equals 1, y is equal to 6 times 1 minus 2 times the square root of 1 cubed. 6 ones are 6. Square root of 1 cubed. 1 cubed is 1. Square root of 1 is just 1. 2 times 1 is 2. 6 minus 2. We get 4 for that. Let's look at the value of y when x equals 4. That's at the stationary point. y value would be 6 times 4 minus 2 times the square root of 4 cubed. Now, incidentally, square root of x cubed is identical to the square root of x cubed. It doesn't make any difference which order, whether you take the square root first, then cube it, or whether you cube the thing and then takes the square root. It doesn't matter. So in the case of working out the value uh, of this, of y, when x equals 4, let's take the square root first. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 cubed is 8. 2 8s are 16. So we've got 24 minus 16, which would give us 8. And then finally, when x equals 9, that's the end point of the interval. It goes from 1 up to 9, 4 is in the middle. y is equal to 6 times 9. That's 6x, 6, 6 times 9 minus 2 times, now the square root of 9 is 3, 3 cubed is 3 times 3 is 9, 3 nines are 27, so it's 2 times 27. So 9 sixes, 54, minus 2 times 27 is 54. So we've got 0. So greatest value in the interval 1 up to 9 is 8 when x equals 4. So presumably that means that x equals 4, that was a stationary, maximum stationary point. Uh, sorry, did I say 4? That's Yes, 8 when x is 4. So on either side of that maximum stationary point, the values of y are less than 8, uh, 4 at 1 and 0 at 9. And the least value is 0. Well, least value in that interval is 0. And that occurs when x equals 9. So greatest is 8, least is 0, and that's when these values occur. That's the x value when these greatest and least values occur for y.